Hello? Hello? Oh my god, we're back again. With a nail tutorial, on these nails to be exact. It's taken me a while to do another nail tutorial because I really wanted to grow my nails out and do a different shape and a different style. So that's what I've got for you today. I've got a little, I don't know what to call this. Do I call it a glitter tip French manicure or an ombre glitter fade? I don't know. I've just got some glitter tips on a milky background and I absolutely love these nails. I always do these. These are my natural nails, by the way. I grew them myself. Just a disclaimer, I know I said this in my last video, but for anybody that's new on my channel, I'm not a nail tech. I'm a professional makeup artist. I do nails on myself as a hobby because I'm trying to save a couple bucks. So if there's any nail techs watching, I'm doing my best with what I have. Just a random gal at home with some nail polishes, okay? Thank you guys very much for the tips on my last video, by the way. I incorporated one of the tips in this video. I have been editing this tutorial all freaking day. I've come to realize that nail tutorials are way harder to edit than makeup tutorials because there's so much shit to explain. I think I'm gonna end this intro here. I don't wanna make this too long. If you guys are liking these nail videos, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do next. And yeah, let's get into it. All right, welcome to Salon Reens. So here are my nails after about three weeks of wear and tear. I have managed to grow them out quite a bit since I filmed my last nail tutorial. And to be honest, I grew them out specifically for this video. I already did my right hand off camera. I'll be working on my left because it's so much easier. So let's get into it. Right off the bat, I gotta tell ya, I read all your comments on my last nail video and the one that was repeated the most was a tip to rough up the surface of my nails a little bit before I soak them to make it easier to remove my nail polish. So, I'm listening today, I'm roughing up my nails with a nail file. I've been using this tip since that video, so thank you very much. I don't know what my life was before this tip, but it definitely helps to penetrate through the nail polish so much better. After I've roughed up the surface of my nails with my nail file, I'm taking my gelish acetone based remover, I'm pouring it into a little glass, and I'm dipping my cotton balls into it before placing them onto my fingers. Like always, I'm wrapping my fingers in little aluminum foil squares and I'm soaking the polish off for about 10 to 15 minutes. 15 minutes later. I'll eventually stop including this in my nail tutorials, but I feel like it's handy for beginners who happen to stumble across my videos. Now it's time to remove the old polish, which is pretty effortless this time around because roughing up the surface of my nails before soaking them made the biggest difference, and the polish is basically just crumbling away on its own. The very tips of my nails need a little extra effort, especially my index finger because it had a crack in it before, but overall this technique is pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. As always, I have my little dirt devil on site so I can clean up my mess because keeping a clean workstation is very important to me. No, you are not seeing things. Yes, I did change my sweater because I felt like gray was a better backdrop for my after shot. Here are my nails clean of my old nail polish. I'm actually pretty proud of the length that I was able to achieve. Now I'm moving to the most satisfying part of this, which is the grooming and the filing of my nails. I feel like this step takes my manicure to the next level. As you can see, I've got a ton of dry skin around my nails, which is no challenge for the Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover. I talked about this stuff in my last video Video, it's it's magic. I apply it to my cuticles and the area surrounding my nails and I leave it to sit for five minutes and just like that the dead skin around my nails and my overgrown cuticles melt away. So with the paddle side of my cuticle pusher, I'm scraping away all of the dead skin, I'm wiping the mush away with a cotton pad, and I'm trimming the dead cuticles that I pushed back with my cuticle nippers. I have a really sharp pair. Again, it's very important to have a nice sharp pair so that you're not tugging and ripping your cuticles. You of course don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but for me personally, I cannot do my manicure without doing this. Sometimes when I'm doing this, my cuticle area looks a little flush, but rest assured it doesn't hurt at all I just I go in on that area so naturally it gets a little red and when I'm trimming my cuticles I always have a paper towel underneath my hand to ensure easy cleanup afterwards
The nails are nice and groomed and now it is time to shape them. And because my nails are grown out now, I can finally go for a coffin shape today like I've done on my right hand. So I'm going to start out by buffing the top of my nails with the gentle side of my nail file. This will make the surface nice and smooth. I always like to wash my hands after this step to remove all that dust from my nails and then I move on to the shaping. So to achieve the coffin shape that I want, I'm filing the sides of my nails at an angle instead of filing the nail straight. I want my nails to gradually come to a narrow point, at which point, no pun intended, I file the tip of my nail straight across as I would if I was going for a square shape. And as I'm doing this, I'm alternating between a few different sized uh, nail files and I wish I knew the grit that they were, but I honestly don't remember because these nail files are super old. Let me just say that they are not at all abrasive. They're actually pretty gentle. I find that a more gentle file works best for this and I know that you're supposed to file your nails in one direction to avoid fraying the nail. I need to be honest with you. I can't. I can't do it. Okay. It just takes forever. I can't get the result that I'm trying to achieve but if you can try to do so. I know people commented on that last time. I can't help myself. I gotta file crazy back and forth. I know that it's not good for your nail. I've been doing it my whole life. So once I've got my coffin shaped down, I'm gonna prep my nails for polish with my C&D Nail Surface Cleanser. All this does is remove any leftover dirt and oil that I may have on my nails so that the polish can adhere better. And for those wondering, the curing light that I use is one by Gelish that came in a kit. I'm not gonna go into much detail here because I already did that in my last video. So if you're interested in what I use, I'll include that video in the cards on the top right hand corner of this video. And I'm also going to list everything that I use in the description box below. Not only do I use my surface cleanser, but I also like to use my Gelish pH Bond Dehydrator, which pretty much does the same thing as the cleanser, but I like to use it as an additional little step to guarantee that my nails are perfectly clean and ready for polish. It's mostly out of habit and because I'm extra. I finally ran out of my little Gelish foundation bottle, so I purchased the full size and I just wanted to show you the difference in the brush applicators. The full size applicator is shorter, it's wider, and I think it helps with a more precise application, at least for me. For anybody who is a beginner, the foundation is a base gel which acts as an adhesive bond between your nail plate and your colored gel polishes. Think of it as like a sticky primer. I like to do just a thin layer of the foundation so that it doesn't drip down the sides of my nails before I cure it. When working with gel polishes in general, multiple thin layers is the way to go rather than doing a couple of thick layers. I've learned this through trial and error. It takes a little bit longer to do multiple thin layers, but trust me, in the end, it is totally worth your time. The result is way better and way less messy. So once my foundation is on, I cure my nails for 45 seconds. Today I'm going to be working with a gelish structure gel and this is in the shade translucent pink. This stuff is amazing. It's a thicker gel that helps not only strengthen your nails, but it hides any imperfections that you may have on your nail plates. like unevenness, damage to the nail. If you have ridges in your nails, it fills in the ridges. It helps when I have cracks on my nails like I do today on my index finger. It's just fabulous. When I grow out my nails, they sometimes feel a little bit thin and they're way more prone to cracking and breaking. So I like to use this gel when my nails feel weak or when they're longer and when I'm working with a thin colored gel polish that requires a lot of layering. It just gives the natural nail a perfect even structure and smoothness. It just makes the colored nail polish glide on like a dream. It also comes in a clear shade and it comes in a shade called Cover pink which is more like a peachy pink. So once I have my structure gel on I'm also going to cure that for 45 seconds and then I'm going to move on to my colored gel polish.
Today I'm going to be using an OPI gel polish in the shade Funny Bunny, which is probably my all-time favorite nail polish shade. Aside from Mod About You, this is just one of my favorites. I've gone through so many bottles of this. It is my go-to when I want a flawless, feminine yet sophisticated dainty manicure. Bunny Bunny is just gorgeous. It's like a soft milky white shade with a cool pale pink undertone with a little bit of iridescence. I can't put into words just how gorgeous it is. You'll have to watch me as I'm layering it. So like I said earlier, that structure gel that I set down really helps when I'm working with thin shades like Funny Bunny. Because this polish is so sheer, it is not forgiving if you have ridges or any unevenness on your nail plate. You have to layer it a lot to conceal those imperfections. So if you're not using a structure gel, you're going to have a little bit of trouble with this. If you are using a structure gel, it'll save you so much time. With the structure gel, if you're careful when you're applying it, you could probably get away with doing one or two layers, but I like to build it up a bit more. So as usual, I'm gonna cure it for 45 seconds between each layer, making sure to also run the polish along the very tip of my nails to seal the manicure. And today I ended up going with four layers because I wanted it to look nice and milky so that the glitter polish that I applied to my tips really pops against it, if you know what I'm saying. For my glitter tips, I'm going to be working with a gelish polish in the shade Am I Making You Gelish? This is a gorgeous silver sparkly nail polish and can be layered to full opacity or as I'm using it today, just as a topper on my tips, kind of like a glitter French fade. It has a few different sized uh, silver glitters in it, as well as holographic glitters. Because it's a glitter, you'd think that it applies super chunky, but it actually goes on super smooth and even. I just, I love it. It also comes in a gold. So basically how I apply this is, I make sure to brush any excess polish along the rim of the bottle, and I'm starting by applying this to the tip of my nail and I'm dragging it downwards towards the center using very light pressure. I'm only going about one fourth or one third of the way down my nail to give that faded glitter ombre look. The majority of the glitter is concentrated at the tip and I just lightly paint glitters below that area to create a bit of a gradient. One technique I use to get just the glitters without the clear polish onto my nails is I will run the pointy side of my cuticle pusher along the nail polish applicator brush and I'll pick up the glitters and place them where I want them on my nails. This will ensure that I get an even amount of glitter without any excess clear polish. It may seem tedious, but it gives me greater control and it's just so satisfying to me to place the glitters exactly where I want them. I cure my nails for 45 seconds between each layer to make sure that my glitter layers stay in place and don't move as I'm adding on. I don't want too much clear polish on the nail though because especially with the structure gel that I've got on, it'll make my manicure appear super thick. So I'm just looking to disperse the glitters nice and evenly.
And another technique that I like to use to add glitters to my nails is taking my saturated nail polish applicator, brushing it onto a clean paper towel, allowing the paper towel to absorb the clear polish which leaves behind just the glitters. And then I go in and I pick up the glitters uh, with that same pointy tool with no additional clear polish and I place the glitters exactly where I want them on my nails. And again, I'm focusing the majority of the glitter at the very tip and I'm creating more of a gradient towards the center. Once I've cured my glitter in place, it's time for top coat. So I'm using the gelish top coat and I'm applying a very thin layer of this, not only to my nail, but along the edge of the tips of my nails to seal everything in place. And I'm gonna be curing that for 45 seconds. Once I'm done, I'm gonna take another cotton pad with my CND cleanser and I'm gonna wipe my nails clean. This removes that sticky top layer that's on my nails and it will leave them really nice and clean and glossy. And now it's time for cuticle oil. I'm using my Star Nail Professional Cuticle Oil in the cranberry scent. And this just rehydrates the skin around my nails and it gives them a nice shiny finish. And that completes this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. I think this manicure is perfect all year round, but it's especially perfect around the holidays. I just love glitter tips. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what nail video you think I should do next. As I mentioned, everything that I used in this video will be listed in the description box below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye.